The this is Major N, a veteran pilot of the Israeli Air Force. He is flying to Tehran to take part in Operation Rising Lion. Although he was advised to switch to the more advanced stealth fighter F-35 for this mission, and still chose to stay loyal to the F-15I. To him, it has always been the most reliable war machine, the best fit for a punitive mission. So why would a skilled pilot put his trust in an aircraft that's 28 years old? Clearly, compared to the F-15, the F-35 has many advantages. This hundreds of millions of dollars machine can evade modern radars and carries advanced electronic warfare suppression equipment. But N still chose the F-15, not because he's conservative. After decades of service in the IAF, he understands Iran's real capabilities, as well as the difficulties of striking the country. First, key locations like the capital, Tehran, are protected by long-range air defense systems, the Bavar 373 and S-300. Iran's systems very commonly use 48 and 6E missiles. Major N does not underestimate the F-35 stealth or Israel's electronic warfare capability to immediately neutralize enemy defenses. But he is certain that even the highest-ranking officials of the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, such as Chief of the General Staff Herzi Halevi, cannot guarantee a 100% success rate. A single small error could turn any Israeli fighter into a target. Facing an object that flies five times the speed of sound with a 150-kilometer engagement range is extremely dangerous. Only fighters designed specifically for air combat, equipped with jammers and highly agile like the F-15, can evade them. And even after breaking through the curtain of surface-to-air fire, N would still face another threat. At Maribad Airport, the Iranians had a MiG-29 squadron on standby, ready to scramble. Though it has a short combat radius, this aircraft intercepts very well. Beyond the MiG-29s, IAF squadrons also had to worry about another danger from the Isfahan area, 340 kilometers from Tehran. Iran had three F-14 Tomcat squadrons ready to reinforce the capital. According to information from the United States, these flying cats are no easy opponents. With variable sweep wings and a massive AN-AWG-9 radar, they can scan targets at about 150 kilometers. Once they detect an IAF incursion, F-14s can intercept or pursue. The Major wants to be fully prepared for this scenario. Remember, as of now, the F-15I is still the only Israeli aircraft that can sustain Mach 2 even while executing complex turns. It can employ AIM-120 Amram Fire and Forget missiles. Once launched, they home to target without N having to guide them. This lets the aircraft engage multiple targets far more flexibly than the AIM-54 Phoenix or R-73 typically carried by F-14s and MiG-29s. To make the most of radar stealth and modern tactics, it also features a very smart cockpit. The controls are neatly laid out and simple, with all data clearly shown. Above them is a transparent display, centered in the front windscreen. It presents all essential information for air superiority missions, so the pilot can focus on killing enemy aircraft without having to look down at rows of buttons. These features simply don't exist in the outdated cockpits of F-14s and MiG-29s. Meanwhile, the F-35's cockpit is overly complex, too much data and color screens everywhere can overwhelm the pilot. And also worries the IAF will have F-35s carry weapons internally when striking Iran to preserve stealth. In that configuration, the jet can carry only 2.5 tons of ordnance. He fears that with such limited load, the F-35 may lack enough air-to-air -air weapons if it meets enemy fighters. Then the country's most expensive fighter would be forced to disengage at its relatively modest Mach 1.2, or call for F-15 support. As a veteran who loves dogfighting, the Major does not want to evade or rely on someone else's protection. He wants to personally shoot down the enemy. And for air combat against F-14s or MiG-29s, the F-15I is the best option Israel currently has. So when he was assigned to Operation Rising Lion with his F-15, and was excited for a spectacular duel with enemy pilots, he braced himself for the worst. Unfortunately, when the Israeli formation penetrated Iran, that country's air force proved weaker than expected. Initially, the IAF F-15I squadrons were ordered to fly low and terrain mask. Meanwhile, several F-35Is at higher altitude conducted electronic warfare to neutralize Iranian defenses. As expected, the enemy's long-range air defense systems were knocked out. Major N squadrons struck first at the airfield, but they were a moment too late. Iranian fighters had already scrambled and appeared ahead. He immediately armed two Python air-to-air -air missiles, with a range up to 20 kilometers. However, the Iranian pilots fled without engaging, likely realizing they had little chance in a one-on-one -on -one against an F-15. Still, this was no time to relax. 
the retreat of Iranian aircraft didn't mean the mission was over. Major N still had to hit Iranian military and nuclear facilities. He considered this both easy and interesting because the F-15's combat load is up to 11.1 tons. It can carry a fairly large arsenal, depending on fuel. In Operation Rising Lion, N's F-15I carried two Python air-to-air -air missiles for potential dogfights with Iranian pilots. When his opponent ran, he didn't chase. He switched to new targets on the ground. The weapons of choice were four Spice Smart Bombs. With a single designate and release action, the bombs dropped from their pylons. Immediately afterward, the Major maneuvered away to search for the next target and didn't watch the bombs all the way to impact. He could be this confident because he had practiced spice strikes many times before. In most training runs, even in bad weather, Spice's release and forget capability guided the bombs to target independent of the pilot. This time was no different. The smart bombs hit exactly where they were supposed to and sent tremors through the ground. Soon after the first target was destroyed, and climbed both to guard against possible medium-range SAMs and to watch for Iranian fighters that might counterattack the stealth formation above. Thanks to a maximum climb rate of 15.24 km per minute, his jet reached 18.29 km. He did this to survey the area, guard against a renewed Iranian strike on the formation, and await the next orders. And so, the moment had come. The F-15I pilots were ordered to activate their most destructive weapon, the Rampage cruise missile, 4.7 meters long, weighing 560 kilograms and carrying a 150 kilogram warhead with extremely powerful explosive force. Since its introduction in 2018, this name has become a source of pride for Israel's military industry. Its capabilities are often compared with the Storm Shadow missile produced by the United Kingdom. Compared to the European weapon, Rampage has a shorter range and weaker destructive power, but in return, it is lighter and its supersonic speed far surpasses Storm Shadow. Most importantly, the cost of Rampage is under 1 million USD, less than one-third of Storm Shadow's $3 million price tag. Each F-15I can carry one of these missiles. Rampage's mission is to precisely strike high-value targets, such as long-range radar systems, communication centers, weapon storage sites, and airfields. In this mission, its target was a high-rise building, from the outside, it looked like a normal civilian structure, but in reality, it was a special building constructed to be extremely fortified with strict defenses surrounding it. It was also the hiding place of several Iranian nuclear scientists. N was outside the engagement range of the Iranian long-range air defense systems below, but about 249 kilometers from the target. It was nighttime and the weather was unfavorable, strong winds, dark skies, and rain. But for an experienced pilot like N, that was not an obstacle, because the Rampage missile, when launched from an F-15, has a range of up to 250 kilometers, fully capable of penetrating bad weather, day or night. In just a few minutes, N locked onto the target and launched the missile. It sped toward the objective and completely destroyed it. After N, other aircraft in the F-35I squadron also began preparing to launch air-to-ground missiles. But instead of using a single powerful strike, they would use two Delilah missiles. This weapon weighs only 187 kilograms and has a range similar to Rampage. Delilah can fly with highly complex trajectories and high precision. When approaching the target, it dives in with an error margin of only one meter. But compared to Rampage, Delilah is far less powerful because its warhead weighs only 54 kilograms and its speed is just Mach 0.5. Iran's medium and short range air defense systems are fully capable of intercepting it. However, when the F-15Is attack simultaneously and guide their missiles to fly close to terrain, weaving through obstacles, interception becomes extremely difficult. Therefore, this weapon is still highly effective for striking urban areas in Iran. Once the squadron fired its last Delilah, the Tehran strike mission had entered its final stage. What mattered now was returning safely to Israel before enemy pursuit. This is also the phase where squadrons are most vulnerable. To avoid the worst-case scenario, the fighter pilots must move quickly towards safe airspace while preparing to fight off pursuing enemies. If they were ambushed at this moment, the squadron could suffer major losses. But with the F-15I, the pilots would not let that happen. Thanks to its two Pratt & Whitney F-100 PW229 engines, specially designed for long-duration operations in the hot, dusty Middle Eastern environment, the F-15I can remain stable even while flying continuously at its maximum speed of Mach 2.5.
Because of this, the squadron could quickly exit the danger zone, and if Iran decided to deploy MiG-29s and F-14s to chase the IAF squadrons to the end, what then? In truth, veteran pilots like Major N were not afraid to face them because the APG-70 radar on the F-15I can track airborne targets within 185.3 kilometers. For ground targets, it can detect threats from about 152 meters to 18.5 kilometers. All signals collected by the radar are processed through the APG-70's terrain mapping feature. A 2D video is displayed sharply on the right-hand cockpit screen regardless of bad weather or low light conditions. This experience is no different from playing a video game in virtual reality goggles. Therefore, as long as pilots like Major N remain alert, they can detect Iranian missiles or aircraft as soon as they approach their fighter. Only when the F-15s finally landed back at the airbase could the pilots safely relax. And once again, the Israeli strike mission succeeded, just like previous attacks against Hezbollah, Hamas, and PIJ. After hundreds of battles, they still rely on the same familiar tactic. Strike hard, sweep through, then withdraw quickly. This hit-and-run strategy is considered the key to survival because the country cannot sustain a prolonged war. Israel is too small with limited manpower, while its enemies are large and surrounded on all sides. Therefore, in wartime, Israel can only focus on disabling one opponent at a time and then pulling back instead of wasting resources fighting across multiple fronts simultaneously. To execute this strategy under such difficult conditions, Israel must choose a fighter jet that meets five requirements. The ability to move at high speed, advanced communications and electronic equipment, strong air combat performance to protect itself from aerial threats, the ability to carry high precision strike weapons, and an open architecture that allows customization and upgrades to match real-world conditions. And so the F-15 line and its upgraded F-15I version became the only choice that fully meets these requirements. For Israel, ever since the country received its first F-15A in 1978, the IAF realized that it needed to upgrade this fighter line to suit the unique conditions of the Middle East. By 1980, a version of the F-15 built specifically for Israel had been delivered, named the F-15 Baz. The F-15 Baz aircraft, used alongside the early variants delivered by the United States, achieved many remarkable accomplishments. They have contributed to protecting Tel Aviv from the threat of national destruction. Today, Israel is witnessing its old adversaries grow increasingly stronger, especially as Iran plans to acquire more modern fighters, such as Russia's Su-35 or China's J-10. These are war machines with capabilities comparable to, or in some aspects even superior to, the F-15. Although the F-15I is very capable, facing the Su-35S or J-10C will not be as simple as confronting F-14 Tomcats or MiG-29s. In addition, Iran is rapidly upgrading its defensive systems making missions over Iranian airspace and strikes against critical targets increasingly risky. Pressure on F-15I pilots will grow heavier. Even when thinking about such scenarios, N does not show fear because he knows that while Iran may be able to buy modern fighters comparable to the F-15, they cannot buy combat-hardened pilots with multi-role experience who have survived countless life-or-death situations like those in Israel. What worries him most is whether, after the current generation of skilled pilots retire or fall in battle, the next generation will be able to carry on. Only the future can answer that.